fortunately, Hume is one of these thinkers who tells you up front, this is what I'm trying to do. There's, no, there's, there's nothing trying to be sort of snuck in the back door. He's quite explicit about what his project is and what are the principles on which he is going to pursue this project. And his project is, in his own words, a complete science of human nature, a complete science of human nature. Basically, what Hume wanted to do was to, to, to do for human nature what Isaac Newton had done for non-human nature. That is, Isaac Newton had come up with uh, governing laws or principles that describe the operation of the planetary motions and you know, physical objects out there in the world. And Hume sees human beings as part of nature. As I say, he's, he's sort of a default naturalist and he thinks, well, everything about us must be part of the natural world. So that means that human beliefs, human desires, human motivations, human experiences must all have natural explanations in the same way that the motion of the planets or water flowing down a hill, these all have natural explanations. So he wants to produce a, a science, a scientific, as he understands scientific, analysis of human nature, of uh, which, which is mainly uh, human, human beliefs and experiences and human uh, actions, um, choices that we make, particularly the moral choices that we, we make. So that's his project to try and uh, come up with some, some basic governing principles that will allow you to, to describe human nature and human activity. And he's going to proceed on the basis of two, I think, two guiding principles. One is empiricism that every claim that he makes has to be grounded in experience. And he says this quite explicitly in the introductions to his works that he, he doesn't want to reach any conclusions that go beyond experience, beyond what can be justified on the basis of immediate experience. Uh, sensory observations. Now he can he can add reason to that. So if you if you observe something and you can deduce something from that observation, then experience and reason can can be used in in that way. But the source the the source of all the information has to come through empirical observation. So empiricism is one guiding principle, and the other is as I said earlier, methodological naturalism. That every explanation has to be in something like a scientific natural law of, of cause and effect or some, some regularity, some principle of regularity that will explain why humans believe what they do and why humans act as they do. So that's, that's sort of the project yeah. and the, the governing principles that are going to um, constrain the way he explores it and the conclusions that he reaches. And it seems then that approach would also then lead him to skepticism about things that can't be explored in those ways. Exactly. So anything that uh, that cannot be justified on the basis of of reason, fairly narrowly understood, and experience is uh, is not well. It's not rationally justified. It can't can't count as knowledge, and you have to take a skeptical stance with it. Which for Hume doesn't mean that you have to doubt it. He doesn't take the view that if you can't rationally justify something, then, then you, you have to doubt it, you have to disbelieve it, because he actually thinks that's, that we're constitutionally incapable of not believing certain things. There are certain things that we have to believe, but it's in our nature to believe them. It's not because we can rationally justify those beliefs.